President of Interpol, Mrs. Balastasi, Secretary General of Interpol, Mr. Ronald Noble, we thank you for your contributions and wish you well. Our distinguished moderator, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's a pleasure to join you to celebrate 100 years of international policing cooperation. I commend Interpol's good work, which has helped to make the world a safer place for everyone. Today, international policing cooperation has become even more important. Globalization and technology have compressed time and space. We have seen large numbers of foreigners going to fight in conflict zones and viruses jumping across oceans. Organized crime syndicates have little regard for national borders, smuggling illicit drugs or trafficking in persons. Criminals have also leveraged on the widespread use of the internet, while terrorists use social media to propagate their extremist ideology far and wide. No country is immune to these evolving security challenges, and that is why we must continue to work together to tackle these challenges more effectively. What we do within our own borders is not enough to keep our own countries and people safe. We depend on each other through cooperation at the bilateral, regional and international level to collectively keep ourselves safe. A number of useful mechanisms have been built up over the years at the regional level. Europol's work is well known. But there are other initiatives and efforts. For example, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations Ministerial Meeting on Transnational Crime provides a useful platform to share information, exchange experiences, and build capabilities among ASEAN countries. Under this umbrella, Singapore is happy to have played a facilitating role as the lead shepherd for fighting cybercrime and international economic crime. The ASEAN Ministerial Meeting on Transnational Crime also provides the platform for the 10 ASEAN countries to engage our Northeast Asian dialogue partners, namely China, Japan, and the Republic of Korea. And we've also held an ASEAN US cybercrime workshop. We certainly welcome more of such interactions with other partners and regions to exchange experiences and information, build capacity, and enhance cooperation. At the global level, Interpol, with its 100 years of history, has played an increasingly significant role in catalyzing international policing cooperation by providing important information sharing, professional expertise, as well as building capacity. With the opening of the Interpol Global Complex for Innovation in Singapore next year, Interpol will have a third command and coordination center in addition to the ones in Lyon and Buenos Aires. This will help to improve alerts, response coordination, and information sharing round the clock around the world. The Interpol Stolen and Lost Travel Documents database is a very good example of how only by working together and sharing data can a service be created that everyone in the global community benefits from. When the database was started in 2002, there were only some 3,900 records from just 10 countries. The database now contains more than 43 million lost or stolen travel documents from 167 countries. And as we have seen, there have been more than a billion hits. But it's only when we all contribute data that the database becomes useful and we can all benefit from it. And this is a clear example where sharing brings benefits to all. Singapore has found this facility useful and accessed the database more than 29 million times last year. This effort helps detect travelers with false travel documents attempting to cross our borders, helping not only ourselves to keep our own countries safe, but also all countries to be more secure. We should also reach out and tap on the strengths and capabilities of stakeholders from the people, public and private sectors. We need all three to work together. Governments hold the legal and regulatory levers, which must be kept updated to deal with rapidly changing criminal tactics. The private sector can bring ideas and technologies to help develop new policing tools to fight crime more effectively. And community groups can draw in the people sector to help governments raise awareness support policing efforts, and take ownership of crime prevention. 
While these regional and international initiatives show how much has been done, we must also remember that a lot more needs to be done, not least because of growing transnational and internet-based crime. We need to work together to arm ourselves with the crime-fighting tools of the future. The Digital Crime Centre in the Interpol Global Complex for Innovation with, with, will partner private sector players to develop advanced tools and techniques to better understand and counter the latest cybercrime trends. These will be made available to Interpol member states. Given the growing global concerns over cybersecurity and the need to build new capabilities to be future ready, Singapore also launched our own national cybersecurity R&D programs. For a start, seven projects in areas such as mobile security, digital forensics, and cloud data protection will receive funding of some 33 million US dollars over the next two to five years. And we will be happy to work with Interpol, IGCI, and member states to synergize our research efforts and find new innovative solutions. Madam President, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, since Interpol was established 100 years ago, it has played an important role in catalyzing international policing cooperation at the regional and global level by providing a platform for member countries to exchange information, build capacity and deepen cooperation. Building on this strong foundation, we must continue to build partnerships for the future and work together to help us to tackle new and emerging crime and security challenges as individual countries and as part of the global community. Together, we can continually build new capabilities to turn back crime and keep our people safe and secure. Thank you very much.